Good evening, folks. How you guys doing out there? Oh my goodness. We got the whole membership in here. This is crazy. I'll be honest with you guys. You clean up real nice. I can't recognize half of you. I shook so many hands tonight. I'm like, was that Mr. Durkin? I don't know who that was. It's awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight. We're going to have a really good time. Give it up for the beautiful staff here. Most importantly, give it up for yourselves. <laughs> Supporting life entertainment. Come on, Mr. Sure, lead that clap there. Come on, you guys. I want to hear this room roar right now. It's amazing. All right. Some of you are just realizing that I'm one of the bagger boys downstairs. Okay, that's right. I have two jobs. <laughs> I get paid a lot more cleaning golf clubs, so. I don't know what Joe was thinking, putting me up on this stage, folks. He approached me about it because he found out I was a comedian. He's like, Jamie, I want you to book the show. I want you to have a good time. And then two days ago, he goes, Jamie, I need you to keep the key, keep, keep it clean up there. I was like, well, there goes all my material. I, I, so the bagger boys are like, do you have any golf jokes? I'm like, no, I'm the only bagger boy that doesn't golf. I don't know what to do. I tell you what though folks, I know you guys have been in the back, you know, been in this club for a while. That giant window we have in front of the back room is to watch you guys swing on that driving range. <laughs> so a lot of you guys ask, like, are you gonna roast us? I'm like, no. <laughs> you do that for us every single day on that driving range. And the first tee, you know? It's exciting. I'm very happy to be here. Seriously, this is cool. Uh, I'm actually having this uh, professionally recorded. And I'm going to submit it to TED Talk, guys, so give it up. Thank you. Yes. It's going to be called How to Lose Two Jobs in One Night. <laughs> How to Lose Two Jobs in One Night. Coming on Netflix in October, hopefully. I'm actually scheduled to work downstairs at 6 in the morning. <laughs> Not sure how that's gonna be in the morning when I show up and <laughs> Joe's gonna be downstairs like Jamie, that was a disaster up there. I don't know what you did, buddy. So yes, yes. Okay, a lot of you guys know me as Jamie. A lot of you guys know me as Lala Rodriguez. You guys look at the board every time you see me. Some of you think I'm Aaron from two seasons ago. Um, <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> Somebody asked me, how's college going? I'm like, I'm 30, basically, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. Um, okay, so Lalo, that's, that's uh, the name I go by, Lalo Rodriguez, okay? Lalo is short for Jaime Eduardo Rodriguez Aristizabal Orozco Alvarez and now it's You guys can call me Carlos, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing, okay? Listen, growing up, my ID in Colombia looked like an appetizer menu. It's true, when you're from another country, your parents put every single one of the last names on that birth certificate. And then you come to the United States and it's a whole mess. I've been pulled over a bunch of times, so like, well, what is your name? Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. I'll tell you guys a little bit about what it's like being an immigrant and not learning how to speak English in the United States. It's a lot like playing charades with a bunch of strangers. And eventually you just get just good at it, you know? It's crazy. Like the things I had to go through to become an American citizen was crazy. Like your parents never learn how to speak English. Why? Because they got you. <laughs> at 10 years old, I was the person responsible for translating our citizenship application. I had no business doing that. Did you come to this country with any explosives and contraband? Yes. <laughs> Are you part of any gang members of the cartel? Yes. <laughs> so I did what everyone else does. I waited till I was old enough to marry a white girl to get my green card. So here I am, folks, right? <laughs> Like, growing up, like, when, when I started going to school with my brother, my brother's five years older than me. We didn't speak English. It was really frustrating. But luckily, for 
folks, kids were break dancing when we first got here. Here's what the kids would do. They would throw a cardboard box on the floor and everybody would take a turn having a little spasm attack on them. You just got served. I look at my brother and he looks at me and he goes, Lalo, looks like we're going to have to communicate through dance. So I let my brother coach me, folks. Big mistake, because it was my turn to dance in front of all the white kids. He pops in the tape. And this is a song that plays. Suavemente, besame. Can you get us a beat? And I just started enthusiastically dancing salsa in front of the white kids. <laughs> Same reaction. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. I didn't get an applause break. <laughs> Instead, I got a bunch of confused white kids. And then my brother yells at me, Lalo, Lalo, you're bouncing too much. Your disco boobs are all over the place. <laughs> what? Your disco boobs. You know the pictures of mom from the 70s when she didn't wear a bra? You got mom's boobs. <laughs> That's where my body dysmorphia started, okay? Every day I clock in, I put on that uniform. I'm like, okay, they're all gonna be looking at them. Oh my gosh, my disco boobs. It's crazy. It's really crazy growing up in the United States when you don't speak the language. Here's the thing, my brother became my fashion designer, okay? I thought when he said disco boobs, I thought he was just calling me fat with like a flair. I don't know if you guys picked up on it. My brother is gay, so I let him dress me. He was up to date with all the cool outfits. Yeah, he took my jeans and cut them into a nice jean skirt. He took my dad's beloved Speedo jacket and cut into a crop top. <laughs> and he took magic markers and wrote whatever cool words he knew at the time. He wrote, Burger King, <laughs> three times. I was like, yeah, white kids love NASCAR, right? And then he goes, Lalo, I got one more thing for you. I'm like, what's that, big bro? He pulls out a box of Heelys. All right, Heelys, <laughs> I'd expect you guys to know what those are. Heelys were the shoes with the little wheels on them. Oh, yeah. Okay, I got mine from the Spanish supermarket. <laughs> Spelled with a J. <laughs> Heelys. <laughs> one of the wheels was a computer chair wheel. <laughs> the other one was a shopping cart wheel. I looked like a newborn giraffe when I put them on. I'm like, ay, puta moya cae. And then my brother has the audacity to tell me, he's like, Lalo, when you get to the bus stop tomorrow, I need you to tell them something for me. I'm like, what's that, big bro? He goes, I need you to tell them that you are <laughs> fabuloso. <laughs> I was like, you got it, hoss. Help me stand up. <laughs> sure enough, 7.30 in the morning, very humid Florida morning. I'm skating off to school with my brand new Heelys. <laughs> I get to the bus stop, and here it goes, folks. I'm gonna replay this for you guys. You ready? <laughs> We're good. <laughs> Hola, muchachos. <laughs> Yo soy. Fabulosa. <laughs> Instead of a second applause break, I got a white kid going, well, why don't you go mop the floor? Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys something. There's only two types of people that know what fabuloso is. <laughs> Latinos and wealthy white people. <laughs> Most shows have to explain to people what fabuloso is. It's purple pine saw. You know, Maria, she comes to your house every Wednesday at noon to clean it. Yeah. <laughs> this is what they do, by the way. They come to your house, they don't clean anything. They just come with a bottle of Fabulous, they go. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> it's true. Yes, Pine Saw or Fabuloso smells delicious, looks delicious. It's poison. <laughs> That's how they keep the population control at bay in other countries, okay? 
Listen, Fabuloso looks like a tasty drink, okay? I was microdosing Fabuloso my whole life, though. <laughs> if I had bad grades, I'd take a little shot of Fabuloso just to numb the pain, you know? <laughs> Look, when you're Latino, your mom makes some really, really good food right before you go to school. And then everyone's like, wow, that new kid Lalo smells delicious. <laughs> and it's not cologne. <laughs> I smell like fried tostones. Yeah, so I would douse myself in Fabuloso going just... <laughs> I don't know, folks, you ever been to a Latino household? There's that shrine in the back, okay? Yes, she knows. There's like lentils, rosaries, hamster skulls, and then a picture of Hector. <laughs> Rest in peace, Hector. And you're like, oh no, what happened? And the mother, almost 10 out of 10 times, she'll go, Fabuloso. It's my edgy Fabuloso joke. <laughs> yeah. I know some of you guys were asking, like, hey, what are you going to talk about up there? Um, actually, I'll let you guys know, uh, uh, let you know something. Mrs. Malfitano, she talked me into getting a Costco membership. She's like, <laughs> she's like, Lalo, you have to sign up. I buy everything at Costco. Literally everything. Literally, she buys every single item at Costco. And I was like, oh my God, cool, I'll sign up for Costco. And I'll tell you what, folks, that was the pinnacle of becoming an American citizen. <laughs> I went to visit my parents in Colombia, and when I got to like the little, little entrance, I couldn't find my passport. My Costco membership card fell out. <laughs> And the TSA agent was like, you're good, go ahead. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Mrs. Burke, <laughs> she talked me into getting an Amazon Prime membership. Ah, oh, yes, you guys love Amazon. Let's hear it. Okay. Yes, buy stock right now. Listen, my brother, I told you guys about him, right? He's always sending my mother gifts through Amazon Prime. I think she loves him a little bit more than me, but whatever, we'll talk about that another time. He forgot to change the address back to his address. So now my mom has been receiving some sex toys. <laughs> She's a saint. So she thinks they're just regular household items. I went to visit my mother. I knock on the door and I'm very excited and so is she. She opens the door. Folks, she's wearing an anal bead necklace. You guys are done eating, right? Okay, good. <laughs> I'm like, no, mom, <laughs> what's going on? It's like, mira, papi, your brother, he got me a rosary <laughs> from the Amazon. <laughs> Look, papi, it's got a button. You press the button and it vibrates for one minute. <laughs> so you know when to stop praying. I'm like, no. Oh! It's not over, hold on a second, okay? I go to her bathroom, and she's got suction cup. The youngest person in here knows what I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> suction cup dildos. Okay, there, I said it. I was like, no, mom, please, what's going on? It's like, mira, papi, your brother, he got me towel racks. <laughs> from the Amazon. I'm like, no, it's like, look, the white one's for regular towels, okay? The little yellow one, the little chiquito, that's for the hand towels. And then the big black one. Your papi, he likes to do pull-ups on that one. He gets another My mom 
could tell that I was getting really worked up. And as a good Latino mother, she's like, Papi, you look a little bit parched. Would you like something to drink? I was like, yes, mother, absolutely. She brings me to the kitchen, and right on the counter, folks, a state-of-the-art penis pump. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> what is this? Mira, papi, your brother, he got me a juicer. <laughs> from the Amazon. <laughs> Look, Papi, you put the fruit on the top and then you pump it. <laughs> and then the juice came out. It worked. <laughs> She hands me the glass. Yeah. I knocked it back. And it was delicious. And at that moment, I was like, Mom, you tell my brother to get me one of those immediately. All right, you guys, you ready to keep this show going or what? You are a phenomenal crowd. And you're in for a real treat.